I come to you in the name of the risen Lord, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. All right. Glory be to God. Fear not, I'm not going to sing again, so you're in good hands. You're in good hands. So, whoo, talk about humility. So, uh, all right. Well, so we got an empty tomb on our hands here. It is uh, the great vigil we call this service because we've been in darkness. We came into the church in darkness to represent the tomb that Jesus was in on what we call today is Holy Saturday. Jesus dead in the tomb. And you have a group of women who were just frazzled, thinking, and I would imagine the apostles were too, but these female disciples that had been waiting all day and all night, that all they saw, they were the ones at the cross, remember, not the men. They were there and they saw their Lord crucified upon the cross. And then they knew that their Lord was now sitting in a tomb and they had to sit all day Saturday, grieving, mourning, pacing, and it says in scripture today, the first thing they did, just when dawn was happening, just when it was still dark out, scripture says they, ran, they came and ran to the tomb very early in the morning. And they were taking the spices. They were coming to grieve and to mourn and to prepare to lay Jesus to rest because he was dead. They went to the place. They went to the tomb. They went to a place where People are dead. They are amongst the dead, you see. And they were giving up to just mourn and do what's proper for Jewish custom. The men had given up completely. They were freaked, freaked out, scared. They thought the movement was over. Messiahs had come and gone before. They'd been crucified, and once they died, Messiahs who had bigger followings than Jesus, and they came, and they went, and they were crucified, and all their followers fled, and it died. So when these women come and they see the tomb is opened, it says they wondered. And that Greek word is they were perplexed. They wondering, what is going on here? What is happening here? And as they wondered and asked these questions inside their head and they see that no, Jesus is there. They're even more wondered. They're even more complex. They're even more confused. What happened? Did someone steal him? Did, did the Romans come and take him? Did they throw him on a heap, which they usually do with those who are crucified? Where is Jesus? That's right. That's right, my friend. They were doing that because they were trying to wonder what's going on. They're trying to find Jesus and they're in this tomb this place of death. And that's when God shows up with his heavenly messengers and says, what are you doing? Just wait a cotton-picking minute. What are you all doing inside this tomb? And they are in awe. They are, they are scared. They're terrified. And they fall down. And they're like fall down to their knees because they know this is a heavenly messenger. And, they're like, they're, and again, the messenger's like, what are you doing? Why are you here amongst the dead looking for the living? Did you forget what Jesus told you? Get up. Do you remember what he told you? You walked with him. You are his disciples. You were with him for three years. He told you this. And in the Gospel of Luke, three times that we know about, Jesus tells his disciples, this is what's going to happen. I got to be given over to the sinners and I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to die. And then I will rise on the third day. And that's when the women were like, it's the third day. I remember. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is true. Jesus Christ is risen. He is the Christ. It's not like all the other messiahs who they just died and fell apart and all the movements went away. This is for real. Everything that Jesus said is the truth. He is the son of the living God. This changes everything. God has defeated death. He has defeated sin. And that's when they ran out of there. And they ran and they told the men. And of course, men being men just said, oh, yeah, you're just crazy women. You're just being too emotional. That's how the word translates in Greek. Right, women? Can I get an amen on that? Come on. Come on, come on. Man, if your woman ever tells you that she sees Jesus Christ risen, you're going to say, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Don't ever doubt. 
Because Jesus in all these Gospels is first talking to women when, they, when the rising happens. you got angels talking to the women, all right? But we got this empty tomb here. And they talk to the men about this, and the men can't believe it, but they get one. They get Peter, the greatest, the greatest apostle of them all. And he runs, and he wonders. They say he wonders. He's not a believer yet. He wonders. This empty tomb is not where God is calling us today. This empty tomb is where we spent Good Friday. This empty tomb is where we spend some of the times of our life when we are scared, when we are worried, when we are frazzled in our own lives, when we're wondering about where is God in my life. But sometimes when we're wondering about where God is in my life, I think sometimes we're focusing too much on the dead Jesus. The Jesus that doesn't move mountains. The Jesus that doesn't cure those diagnoses. The Jesus that can't take away addiction. The Jesus that can't make prosperity come back into your life when you hit hard times. The Jesus that can't heal a marriage. The Jesus that cannot heal injustices and bring communities together. That's the Jesus sometimes we fall in the trap on. And we're stuck in the tomb. Not today. Today we are reminded that we believe in the risen Christ. And that Christ is not hanging around in the tomb. He's not hanging around with the dead. He's not hanging around with old thoughts, old ways. Ways that lead to injustices. Ways that lead to divisions. Ways that lead us to just walk around in pace and do the same old things and behaviors that keep on running us into walls. Today, Tonight is the night that we are reminded of the risen Christ in our lives. And if you have thought maybe for the last, there's a tomb in your life right now, that you've been pacing like the women in the tomb, and that you're like, I can't work through this right now. I'm kind of stuck with this. I'm in a bad spot right now. I got, a, I got a rough relationship going on right now. I got a career right now that's going absolutely nowhere. I don't know what's going on right now. I invite you tonight. I invite you to, to, to identify that. And then I invite you to bring the risen Christ into that. Pray to the risen Christ and say, Jesus, the one who has rose, the one who defeated death, the one who defeated sin. If he defeated death and defeated sin, he can help heal my marriage. He can help heal my job issue. He can show me direction and formation of where I need to go in my life because my time is not over yet. God's got a new chapter for you. That's the power of the resurrection. We are Easter people. We're not in the tomb. So we got to get out of the tomb and follow Jesus because he's waiting for you out there. He ain't here. So he's looking for that. So I leave you today. This is, this is a powerful, powerful time for us. This is Easter. But locate one place where you might be stuck in the tomb. One thing in your life right now. And I want you to call the resurrected Jesus into that part of your life. The resurrected Jesus. Not the Jesus that had great teachings. Not the Jesus that we read about in the Bible and just say, oh, he was nice. Let's follow those ways. Not the Jesus that we sometimes just pray over our food for. I want the resurrected Jesus who can move mountains. That's the Jesus I want you to pray to. And then I want you to think of one step you can take to meet him. Because he calls you to leave the tomb. He calls you to run towards him. He says, follow me. He ain't going to do all the work. You got to meet him halfway. So you got to take that step. You got to make that phone call. You got to get out of bed earlier to get to the gym. You got to go make, make, a, make, make an appointment with a counselor if you need for that marriage. You need to go and learn some new skills if you're sick of your career and you want to get a new career going. You got to go work on yourself if you want to be able to bring more love to this world. You got to go fight for justice if you feel like there's injustices in this community. You got to get up and go because that's where Jesus is calling you. So we're inviting three new people into that kingdom today. Sienna. McKinney. Ellie? Where's Ellie? Ella. This is one vowel. Can I get a vowel, please, Pat? <laughs> Ella. So what do you say? How about we baptize three more into this glorious kingdom? You ready for this? All right. God bless you and happy Easter.